Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Pretty well. Good, good. My name's Lev. What's your name? My name is Shaheen. I'm from India. Pleased to meet you. I'm from London, United Kingdom. Nice to meet you too. So how um how long have you been learning English? I have I've seen your YouTube uh, channel or a few uh, few videos on there, and I find it very in, in, uh, interesting uh, and intriguing. So, what is the idea around the YouTube channel? Uh, sorry, I couldn't understand your question. Means sure. What so, so what is your aim with the YouTube channel? Okay, uh, initially I had started it for my school students. I'm running a school. I have been running it uh, since last uh, many years. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, in the beginning, I, I would share it my, uh, with my students, but uh, after a few days, I got good subscribers as well. So uh, always I give preference to my students, but uh, sure, of course, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this way I'm uploading on YouTube. Okay, okay, great. Um, what do you find challenging about the English language? Uh, in the beginning, everything was challenging for me. Uh, even though I have, uh, I have been studying uh, English as a subject uh, since my schooling, but uh, I, have, uh, I have completed my education in my regional uh, language, like uh, Marathi medium. Mm -hmm. I'm living in Maharashtra. So uh, definitely uh, mm, there was a exposure to language, but uh, not for spoken. It was just... Practical, uh, the the, gra maybe the grammar aspect, the grammar vocabulary. Aspect. Yeah, okay. For the score. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I understand. Uh, yeah. And uh, when I practically exposed to the... Uh, society uh, when I grew up and uh, I was uh, meeting people uh, out of my district or out of my region uh, in metro cities then I realized that my pronunciations are really pathetic oh I, I wouldn't say I mean certainly not now um, I don't know about back then but certainly I don't think that your pronunciation is, is bad at all uh, yeah, I, I have been working on it um, uh, since uh, for last four months. Okay, okay, that's good. Well, you seem to have come a long way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. And what would you like to do specifically today? Have you got anything uh, in mind, or would you just like to have a general conversation? Uh, I went through your profile and I saw that you have a neutral uh, British spoken. And yeah. the one more line is written there. I pay attention especially to pronunciation. <laughs> so definitely I want to uh, practice my pronunciations with you. Okay, that's and, good. Uh, uh, and uh, I would expect uh, grammatical mistakes as well. <laughs> sure, sure. That's, that's no problem. Um, so far, I haven't picked up any grammatical errors at all uh, in your speech. Um, but um, uh, there's just a few, uh, as far as pronunciation is concerned, it's very good. It's, it's a very high standard. Um, obviously, there's an Indian uh, accent influence there, but that, I would say that's pretty normal, <laughs> really. Um, uh, because you, unless you live in a country, uh, and sometimes for a long time, your accent will never be 100% native sounding. It could be very close, um, but it's not going to be 100% uh, native sounding because even native speakers have different way of pronouncing things. Um, yeah, different dialects. Yeah, are different there. dialects. Uh, they may use different idioms, for instance. They may use phrases which are local to their own area. Um, yeah. So there is a difference with even within a native speaking country. Yes, uh, yes. With the language. I don't want. I don't want a British accent or American accent. Mm. I just want neutral pronunciation. Neutral. Yeah. Which is which is which is good. Yeah. Um, I I would say. Um, most of Europe tends to deal with uh, the British type of accent, and they're more familiar with that. No, but uh, in England, so many dialects are there. So yes, um, it's I think true. it's a, it's not a good idea to 
uh, pursue some accent. It's not absolutely, possible. Absolutely, absolutely. And there's, there's very little point as well. Um, why would you want to pursue an accent of a certain region in the country um, mm -hmm. when you're not from that region? <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. it, it doesn't seem to be uh, uh, much point in that. But yes, yeah, certainly neutral out accent. So you're you're understood that's the most important thing is that you're clearly understood whether you're speaking to someone who's in america or whether you're speaking to someone who's in europe or australia or canada or south africa i i can't uh different that much but i can understand americans and british clearly <laughs> <laughs> they're the two main ones um yeah. anyway and um i think once you familiarize yourself with those two then yeah perhaps you can diverse a little bit into the others yes sure <laughs> yeah yeah that's good but um yeah i i don't feel that you have a strong accent at all um is there anything that you're aware that you think this is i'm getting this wrong i can't pronounce this quite right is there anything that you struggle with with pronunciation uh before uh, there was a few uh, words or a few uh, alphabets but now i don't have uh however i i face some time my tutor taught me individual words individual pronunciation if i pronounce certain words individually i pronounce it uh, properly but when i speak in the flow if mm. suppose we are uh, conversing on some topic and i forgot so i always make pronunciation mistake with what like what okay uh, yeah it's with a v but, rather, like, than oh. a rather than a what rather than a what yeah uh, I mean, pronunciation, uh, especially in the English language, um, is to do with your mouth and your tongue. Some languages yeah. are spoken from the back of the throat, where English yeah. is spoken with the lips and the tongue movement. And yeah. really, that is part of the art of pronouncing correctly. Is <laughs> Yeah. So far, I, I, uh, I'm aware of each and every sound, uh, each and every a pronunciation, tongue position, and everything. That's good. But when I speak in fluency, yes, sometimes mm. I forgot, and uh, I I came back to my <laughs> previous pronunciation. It's a, yeah, it's so, it's, it's, it, yeah, it's quite normal. Um, what I recommend, as much as a lot of students make the mistake of trying to speak too quickly, because they think they sound more native speaking. Mm. To an extent, that's true. However, the most important thing initially is to pronounce everything correctly. Once you've mastered that, then you can increase your speed. Yes, but if you absolutely. try if you try to do that, as with your experience, before you're ready, you revert back to where you were. Yes. Um, so it's it's a matter of not only your mouth, tongue and brain being able to cope with the pace of the speed yes. that you want to speak um it's uh it's an adaption it's a it's a mind adaption because each language um uses different parts of the brain and the brain needs to adapt each language has its own rhythm um yes. and if you learn the rhythm you sound more like a native speaker yeah, that's what I was practicing <laughs> lately. The, uh, the rhythm largely is determined by intonations and stresses. So yeah. uh, that's the main part of it. It's not the only part, but it's 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 the main part. Um, for instance, we would, as a general rule, we would our voices and our tones would go down at the end of a sentence. If we're mentioning yeah. someone's name, a month, a year, or an emotional happiness, our voice goes up. Um, yeah. And likewise, at the end of the sentence, or if there's a sad situation or emotion, then our voices go down. Yeah. Um, so that's part. So can you can you help me with that intonation, mm. rhythm, word stress? Sure, sure. Um, for instance, if you're if you're speaking um, a sentence, and you're speaking about something 
which is happy, um, your voice automatically would go up. I'm happy. Could you see that my voice doesn't actually go louder, but the tone goes higher. In American intonation, it's slightly different <laughs> because they can turn a normal statement into a question just by raising that last piece of the sentence and it turns Are you happy? Uh, yeah exactly and it turns it into <laughs> a question um the british side of english we tend not to do that <laughs> um but um it's becoming more popular and the influence of um, the american english is is apparent but um I would say we're less inclined to do that. We would rather change the, the sentence structure or the vocabulary to ask the question. Uh, whereas in America, they all do it with their tone, as you as you uh, pointed out, yeah. Um, so, so those are all important things. Um, when, when you listen to someone speak, um, don't just listen to the words, listen to the rhythm when they stop, when they start, when their voice goes up, when their voice goes down, and start to... Is there, is there any technique to learn all there those There is, things? and it's very involved. Um, it's probably too involved to, to explain in one lesson today. Um, but uh, the, main, the main points I, I can obviously cover, like I said, if you're, if you're dealing with emotions or if you're dealing with a list of subjects, your voice goes up on each apart from the last one where your voice would go down because you're ending the sentence. So there's little tricks like that. Also, um, um, as a general rule, and there is other um, rules regarding this, but as a general rule, in English, if you pronounce the first letter and the last letter of the word with a slight stress, you tend to pronounce it correctly. That's only for two syllable words though. If the word is more than two syllables, that rule changes. Yeah. Um, so for instance, the word book, for instance, I'm putting a stress on the and the K. And that makes you generally pronounce things clearly and precisely. Um, I can't think of anything else with the general with the general rules. Um, there are links that I can send you later on, <laughs> which will help you with these intonations and stresses. Yeah. Um, and there are there are recordings of people pronouncing things correctly and how they should be uh, pronounced. And then it gives you a chance to record your own voice and listen to how you sound as well. So, um, but but. Um, it's generally, it's, it's listening. Um, it's the art of listening. And when I say listening, really listening. Um, um, not just to the words, to the rhythm, uh, to the pace. Most English uh, people, um, or British people, I should say, they speak, they tend to speak not too fast. If they're amongst themselves, um, they may speak more faster because they know that the person opposite is able to cope with the pace. Um, so they will they will increase the speed. But generally speaking, they don't. We don't really like to speak that fast. <laughs>